Hello and welcome to video 1 for week 10. In this video I'm going to define eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And on the surface this might seem like a slightly strange definition and a weird thing to focus on, but it turns out that eigenvalues and eigenvectors are important for a whole host of problems. A lot of the ways that linear algebra is used in applied mathematics comes down to finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of some matrix and interpreting them. So let's get to the definition. So say I have an n by n matrix, square matrix that's necessary, and I have a non-zero vector uh, here, and I have some real number. The real number could be zero. The vector has to be non-zero. This v, this vector v is called an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. This is the Greek letter lambda here. If the matrix action on the vector doesn't change the direction, but may change the length. So we've got some vector here, and the matrix does something to it. It might change its length. It might multiply by a negative number and flip its length, but it's still on the same line. So eigenvectors are vectors whose length may be changed, but whose direction or the line that they sit on is not changed. It is possible for lambda to be zero, so this vector could also just be sent to zero. That's an option. But other than that, the vector's direction is changed. And as I said at the start of the video, that might seem like a strange thing to focus on. Why is it so important to know which directions don't change and what the scaling factors for those directions are? But it does turn out to be an immensely important thing. This eigenvector associated to this eigenvalue lambda is not unique because if I scale it by any factor alpha, so if I multiply v and start with a longer vector, then if I act on this by linearity, the alpha can come out. The action of the matrix here is just multiplication by the, by the eigenvalue lambda, and then I can interchange the order of those multiplications. So alpha v is, has the same property as this, is that the matrix action is just multiplication by the number lambda. So eigenvectors can be scaled as much as you wish. A matrix is going to have some number, some finite number of eigenvalues, and each eigenvalue is going to have infinitely many eigenvectors associated to it. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to find those and how to describe those in future videos. For now, I want to go through a bunch of examples just to make sure we understand what the concept is. So take the identity matrix. The identity matrix doesn't do anything to any vectors. All vectors stay in the same place. That means all vectors are eigenvectors, and the eigenvalue they have is 1 because they're just multiplied by 1. Similarly, if we take the zero matrix, the zero matrix sends everything to the origin. That means that any vector just gets multiplied by zero, because multiplying a vector by zero makes that vector the zero vector. So all vectors are eigenvectors of the zero matrix. And there's only one eigenvalue, which is zero. A rotation in R2 doesn't fix any directions. A rotation rotates all directions. There are no directions that are unchanged. An eigenvector is a direction which is unchanged, so a rotation in R2 cannot have any eigenvectors. A rotation in R3, however, goes around an axis. And anything that's on the axis is unchanged. Anything that's off the axis gets rotated, and its direction will not be the same. But in R3, a rotation does have eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Anything that's on the axis is an eigenvector, and since it's completely unchanged by the rotation, its eigenvalue is 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything to a vector. A reflection in R2 has two eigenvalues, 1 and negative 1. If we think about a reflection over a line in R2, it's reflection over this line, then anything on that line doesn't change at all. So anything on that line has eigenvalue 1. Anything perpendicular to that line is directly flipped. So anything perpendicular to the line of the reflection has eigenvalue negative 1. Negative 1 is flipping a direction. And something that's neither of those here gets reflected over to here, that's not an eigenvalue. That's not uh, the same direction. Those directions are, are different. So a reflection can be determined in R2 by having exactly these two eigenvalues. One direction that is unchanged, that's the line of reflection, and one direction that is flipped, that's perpendicular to the line of reflection. Similarly, if I have a projection in R2, if I erase this one for a moment, and I think about a projection onto a line in R2, if I project onto this line, Anything on the line still stays the same. So if I have a vector on the line, it doesn't go anywhere. So it'll have eigenvalue 1. Anything perpendicular to the line gets sent to 0. So anything on this line gets projected down to the origin. So again, I have a perpendicular direction that gets sent to 0. And a direction that gets sent to 0 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 0. And things that are 
in some other direction get projected down like this, those are not going to have an eigenvector property because their directions change. They're not just scaled by something. So a projection onto a line in R2 also has two eigenvalues, in this case one and zero instead of one and negative one. Uh, in these two examples, the eigenvalues, or the eigenvectors rather, were perpendicular to each other. That doesn't need to be true in general. That's just true of these particular examples of reflections and projections. I want to do one more example of the dilation matrix in R3. So here we have a dilation matrix in R3. And it acts on the axis vectors by dilating them. So it dilates the x direction by 1, or by a, the, the y direction by b, and the z direction by c. That means that these axis vectors are multiplied by this number a. So 1, 0, 0 goes to a, 0, 0, which is the same as scaling 1, 0, 0 by a. So this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue a. Likewise, the second axis vector is an eigenvector with eigenvalue b, and the third axis vector is an eigenvector with eigenvalue C. So a dilation matrix has the axis vectors as its eigenvectors, and its eigenvalues are the scaling factors A, B, and C of the dilation. Again, this is an example where the eigenvectors are all perpendicular to each other, but that doesn't have to be true in general. Hopefully these examples give you an idea of what's going on. In the next video, we'll start talking about how to actually calculate these things.